Roll Tide and welcome to the Crimson Tide production studio inside Bryant-Denny Stadium. I'm Roger Hoover, joined by my co-host Kenzie Hughes. And Kenzie, I missed you last week. I was on the road with women's basketball, but it's great to be home here in Tuscaloosa. I miss you too. It's great to have you back. And that was an incredible win on the road for Christy Curry. But we'll get to it later because the Alabama men's basketball team has been red hot to begin SEC play. After this past weekend, the Tide was 8-1 and one in conference play and had won 10 out of their last 11. That 10th win came at home this past Saturday against the Mississippi State Bulldogs. It was a tight contest in the opening minutes of the game with Mississippi State taking the lead at 14 to 12 thanks to a dunk by Jimmy Bell Jr. But from there, the tide started rolling. Alabama closed out the first half, outscoring the Bulldogs 35 to 10. The tide shot a season high 29 three point attempts in the first half, knocking down eight of them, while the Bulldogs shot 0 for 6 from beyond the arc. That strong finish to the half put Bama up 23 at the break, 47 to 24. Alabama continued their dominance in the second half as they led by as many as 34. The Bulldogs shot just nine three point attempts compared to a season high 48 from the Crimson Tide. The tie connected on 50. 15 of those 48 as Jaron Stevenson knocked down four of six while Mark Sears connected on three of six from beyond the arc. Walk on Kai Spears who recently earned a scholarship with the Tide put the icing on the cake in the blowout win as he knocked down his first three point shot of his career for the final points for the Tide on the night as the Tide rolled over the Bulldogs 99 to 67. Alabama has won 14 straight SEC home games at Coleman, the longest winning streak since 1988. The SEC's leading scorer, Mark Sears, led the way for the Tide with 21 points on 6 of 10 from the floor and 3 of 6 from beyond the arc. Aaron Estrada added 15 with 8 rebounds, while the Tide had two more score in double figures. Jaron Stevenson had 14, with Muhammad Diabate just missing a double-double with 14 points and 9 boards. The 99 points mark the 10th game this season. Alabama has scored 90 or more points in a game. The Tide still lead the nation in scoring average at 89.9 points per contest. And on Wednesday night, the Tide hit the road to take on the 11th ranked Auburn Tigers. Alabama had already defeated Auburn this season with a 79 to 75 win inside Coleman Coliseum back on January 21st. Going into the matchup, Alabama was also the last team to defeat Auburn in Neville Arena with a 77 to 69 win back on February 11th of last season. On Wednesday night, Alabama led in the opening minutes, but the Auburn Tigers used a 12-0 run to take a 14-point lead 10 minutes into the game. The Crimson Tide battled back with a 19-4 run of their own to reclaim the lead at 37-36 with just under five to go in the half. But with a score tied at 39 all with just under four minutes remaining in the first half, Auburn went on a huge 16-2 run to take a 55-41 lead at the break. The Tide cut the Tigers lead to 11 in the second half, but that's as close as they would get. Mark Sears had a game high 16 second half points, but it just wasn't enough as Auburn avoided the season sweep with the 99 to 81 win. Auburn was ready to go. We weren't, you know, it's for first place. They came out, play like it was for first place. We played like we'd still be in first place if we won, which is a little disappointing because we could have separated ourselves a little bit and we didn't. So. Now I'm guessing I haven't looked at the scores. I'm guessing we're in a four-way tie in the loss column in first place. So, you know, we've got some work to do in these last eight games. You know, they, they were better than us. They, they played harder. You know, they out-rebounded us. They were up on the glass most of the night. They took advantage of our smaller lineup inside. They turned us over. We didn't turn them over. A lot of the effort stats that you look at, rebounds, turnovers, they, they were better than us. So. I, uh, we got, we got to go back. We got to play our, you know, they, they, they were definitely a better team, more prepared. They, they were ready to go tonight. And with the wins over Georgia and Mississippi State this past week, the Tide jumped up eight spots in the AP Top 25 and moved up six in the coaches poll to number 16 this week. Alabama women's basketball coach Christy Curry hit a career milestone this week. We'll tell you what it is coming next right here on Tide TV This Week. Tide TV This Week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Ford, visit your local Ford dealer, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. What a scene at Coleman Coliseum. Whoever shows up needs to be as loud as they can possibly be. It is just as loud here at Coleman Coliseum tonight. But Alabama able to battle and fight. 
and dig down and show toughness and grit. I thought that the crowd was going to believe it. I'm telling you, this place is rocking right now. Alabama fans at Coleman Coliseum have been so good all year long. These fans deserve it. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. We're bringing you the latest on Alabama athletics from right here inside Brian Denny Stadium. And just like the men, the Alabama women's basketball team have gotten off to a hot start. The Tide is now 18-6 and 5-4 and and in SEC play. Last Thursday, Christy Curry's squad picked up a big win on the road at Fayetteville against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Sarah Ashley Barker scored the first points of the game on this three-pointer just seconds into the game. From there, it was back and forth throughout the first period as Alabama led by a point after the first 10 minutes of play, 20 to 19. The second period was the difference in the game. Alabama shot over 60% from the floor while following Arkansas to connect on just two of 19 from the floor. The Tide outscored the Razorbacks 23 to six in that second period to lead by 18 at the half, 43 to 25. After the break, Alabama extended their lead to as many as 25 in the third as the Tide held a 20-point lead going into the final period, 71-51. The Razorbacks battled back in the fourth using a 12-0 run to cut Alabama's lead to nine points with just over three and a half minutes to go. But Sarah Ashley Barker hit back-to-back -back layups as she scored seven points to close out the game, and Carly Weathers knocked down a big three-point shot with just over two minutes to play to put the Crimson Tide up 13. Hogs put up a tough fight at the end, but the Tide was too strong as Alabama picked up a win on the road in Fayetteville with a 86-70 victory. Alabama had five scoring double figures, led by Sarah Ashley Barker with 25. Barker had a double-double. She also added 11 rebounds. Carly Weathers added a season-high 16 points off the bench as she knocked down four of her six shots from three-point land. Ali and I added 15 points while Essence Cody and Jessica Timmons had 12 each. Coach Curry's squad was back in action on Monday night in Nashville against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Alabama jumped out to an early 9-3 lead, but the Commodores battled back to tie the game at 12-all. Alabama then closed out the opening 10 minutes of play with a couple of baskets to take a 16-12 lead after one. Vandy bounced back in the second period, outscoring Bama 21-8 to take a 33-24 lead going into the half. The Crimson Tide battled back after the halftime, outscoring the Commodores 22-19 in the third to trail by just six points entering the final 10 minutes of action. In that fourth period, the Tide began to roll. A Sarah Ashley Barker three-pointer just over eight minutes to go made it just a two-point game and then another trade. This one from Aliyah Nye gave the Crimson Tide a four-point lead at 58 to 54 with over six minutes to go. Alabama still up four with just over a minute to play. Aliyah Nye drilled another one from beyond the arc for the icing on the cake, putting the Tide up seven with just over a minute to go. Alabama knocked down a trio of free throws from there as the Tide rallied on the road in Nashville for a 74 to 66 win. And by the way, Roger, the win was the 500th career victory for head coach Christy Curry. Congratulations on hitting that milestone, coach. It was the 500th win in Coach Curry's 25th year as head coach at the collegiate level. The trio of Sarah Ashley Barker, Aliyah Nye, and Loyal McQueen combined to score 63 of the Tide's 74 total points. Sarah Ashley Barker led the Tide in scoring again with a game-high 24 points and 9 rebounds. Aliyah Nye was 5 of 6 from beyond the arc as she tied her season high with 23. Loyal McQueen had a season high 16 as well in the win. And with those back-to-back 20-point -back performances, Barker was named the SEC Co-Player of the Week for the first time this season. Barker leads the team in scoring average at 17 points per game and ranks fourth in the SEC in field goal percentage. The win over Vanderbilt improved Alabama's record to 18-6 on the year and 5-4 and in SEC play. Let's take an all-access look at the Tide's big win over the Commodores. Christy Curry's 500th win as a college coach had plenty of grit, plenty of love, and plenty of gratitude. This was a dog fight, and Alabama stayed with it. Oh! Outscored by Vanderbilt 21 to 8. I hope those adjustments will be made in the second half. Big bucket right there by Sarah Ashley Barker. Used her jab step to the right, got to her left hand, and the left elbow extended jumper rattles in to make it 40 to 31. And that they can lose leads late in the ball game. Stay with it if you're the tie. Her left wing launches a three. String music from Sarah Ashley Parker. That's Clear lane, right side layup good. Sold away by Weathers. Bama keeps coming back. Pops a three-pointer. Hits a three-pointer. Rises up from deep range. Cash money. With a three. Layup banked in. Loyal McQueen. A lot of work to do for Alabama, but they're going to have to do it on the defensive end. 
good rebound by Morgan. She traveled with the ball, so it'll still be Crimson's on possession. A right wing three. Switch. Another three pointer by Aliyah. Now, and Cody left alone. Right block spins around, puts it up, puts it home. The nine left corner three. Give it to her. Aliyah nine buries the three pointer as Alabama beat Vanderbilt's press. Final score from Memorial Gymnasium Alabama 74, Vanderbilt 66. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, when something like this happens. Oh! It's a lot about we and not about me, and it's a lot of we's. It's a lot of players that have sat in your seat, and so many people. Um, Coach I'm Kelly. Oh, I'm I'm Coach Kelly. Coach Kelly. Coach Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> In the win, head coach Christy Curry reached a career milestone, which was her 500th win. It was also the 191st victory in her 11th year as the head coach of the Crimson Tide. Let's take a look at some of the biggest moments from Coach Curry's tenure as the head coach at Alabama. I present to you our women's basketball coach, Christy Curry. I'm extremely honored and proud to be the new head coach at the University of Alabama. Guys, there's a rich tradition here, and I'm proud to be a part of that. So we're proud to represent something bigger than ourselves. She's done some pretty nice things with this tight team. And coach Curry has been talking about it, just trying to build Alabama back up and trying to get them to be more of a consistent program. I think you can always be the most passionate and the hardest worker in the room, and I will fight for those kids. Alabama making their first NCAA appearance since 1999. But she has done a tremendous job here in Tuscaloosa. Christy Curry had a message for us yesterday. She said, rise and shine and roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> Sell Alabama. This program has laid the foundation. Now it's time for us to knock down the gates of Omaha. And we're going to do that here real soon. Welcome back to the Crimson Tide Production Studios inside of Bryant Denny Stadium. I am Kenzie Hughes, joined by Roger Hoover to talk some Alabama gymnastics. Ashley Johnson and company had quite the matchup inside Coleman this past week as the third ranked Kentucky Wildcats came to town. Freshman Jamison Sears got the tide rolling early with a career high 9 9 on vault, resulting in her first ever podium appearance while wearing the script A. From there, it was senior Cameron Machado who came through on the second rotation of the night with a score of 9-9 on the uneven bars. Heading into the final rotation, the Crimson Tide found themselves in unfamiliar territory. Trailing against a top 10 opponent for the first time this season headed into the final rotation, Alabama responded by recording four scores of a 9-9 or higher on the floor exercise. Despite a 9-9-2-5 from Luisa Blanco and another 9-9 from Machado in the final rotation, the third-ranked Wildcats escaped with a win in Coleman. In total, seven Alabama gymnasts posted a total of eight individual season-high scores in the meet. Crimson Tide are ranked seventh in this week's rankings. It's the sixth straight week the Crimson Tide have been ranked inside the top eight. Alabama is ranked number ten, has been ranked tenth or higher in three of the four events, with their highest being fourth in the uneven bars. Head out to Coleman next Friday for the 20th anniversary of the Power of Pink meet, where we honor those whose lives have been affected by breast cancer. The Alabama softball team begins their season this week, and of course, baseball begins its season next week. We'll have that and more coming up next, right here on Tide TV This Week. And for the 
first time since 2010. The Alabama Crimson Tide is an NCAA region. Here today as we introduce Rob as the next head coach of Alabama baseball. I don't need to sell Alabama. Start the party for the right field Rangers. This program has laid the foundation. Now it's time for us to knock down the gates of Omaha. And we're going to do that here real soon. Welcome back to Tide TV this week. Alabama football head coach Kalen DeBoer put a wrap on the 2024 signing class on Wednesday, adding three more to the Tide's already impressive group. Starting with Noah Carter, he originally signed with Washington, but followed Coach DeBoer here to Alabama. The four-star is the top-ranked player in Arizona and one of the top edge players in the country. QB Reese from Ramsey High School in Birmingham joined the Tide on Wednesday. Reese is one of the top linebackers in the state of Alabama. And the big one was wide receiver Ryan Williams. He reclassified from the 2025 class. Williams is a consensus five-star and ranks the number one wide receiver in the nation by ESPN and their number three player overall. A great finish for the 2024 recruiting class as Kalen DeBoer era begins at Alabama. Crimson Tide finished with the second most ESPN 300 recruits with 18, also finished with the second highest rated class overall. And you can catch Coach DeBoer and his new staff along with the Crimson Tide football team in action for the annual Golden Flake A-Day game. That will take place inside Bryant Denny Stadium on April 13th. Also, homecoming is set for October 26th against Missouri. And hey, if you check this out, if you feel like you're going to miss seeing Coach Saban on the sidelines next season, don't you worry. We'll get to see him every Saturday on ESPN's College Game Day. Coach Saban will join the crew at the desk and will also be a part of the NFL draft coverage as well as SEC media days. That's going to be some must see TV, Roger. I'm excited for that one. Yeah, I can't wait to see him display that personality on ESPN. Personalities of the Alabama softball team, they'll be on display soon as their season will start in Atlanta. The 12th ranked Crimson Tide will take part in the Buzz Classic hosted by Georgia Tech. The Tide will play five games in the Buzz Classic, one against Villanova and two each against Longwood and Georgia Tech. The weather hasn't been the greatest and you know I've told a couple of people that last year we didn't go inside one time for preseason and I think we've already gone in eight times this year. So it's been cold and rainy and you guys know that. Uh, we're lucky we have an indoor facility that we can do defense inside and we have a great hitting facility right here. But I've been really, really pleased. We've had five scrimmages, which is the most we've ever had. So the pitchers have seen a lot of hitters and the hitters have seen a lot of pitchers. But I can tell you one thing for sure, we are sick and tired of seeing each other and we can't wait to play somebody else. Alabama men's tennis team picked up a couple of big wins over the weekend. The Tide swept both Kennesaw State and Tennessee Tech 7-0. With those sweeps, Alabama improved to 5-2 on the year and is ranked 21st in the nation. A great start to the season for head coach George Husak in the Crimson Tide. Absolutely, and then Kayla McRae clocked the fastest 400-meter time in the world on the final day of the New Mexico Collegiate Classic. His time of 45.02 earned him first place and is the fastest time in the nation, the world, and was also a new personal best. McCray was named the SEC Men's Runner of the Week. He's topping charts left and right, and Samuel Ogazi was named the SEC Men's Freshman of the Week for his performance in the 400 meter. Ogazi broke the Nigerian U-20 indoor record and posted the new world leading time by a U-20 runner for the 2024 season. Stay with us. We'll have our plays and players of the week coming up next. It's one like no other. All right, it's, that's for real. What you got here, your home field advantage is for real. In front of a full house at the Rhodes House. And it goes to the wall, and it's gone. A miracle comeback for the Crimson Tide. How about some noise at the Rhodes House tonight? And the Crimson Tide will ride this season's wave all the way to the World Series.
you're going to be seeing your Chenko lay out full. Oh! <laughs> She's a freshman. This is a huge moment for Luisa. Coaches. Looks like she's enjoying this routine. That is so impressive for an athlete that used to be a really big perfectionist. Parker pops a three-pointer. Hits a three-pointer. McQueen, top of the key. Aliyah Nye with a three. Pass goes to Nye. Left for the three. Give it to her. Christy Curry's 500th win as a college coach had plenty of grit, plenty of love, plenty of gratitude as Alabama, once down by 12, comes back to win on the road by 8. And those are our plays of the week brought to you by Legacy of Hope. Now let's take a look at our players of the week. And we got a couple of really good ones this week, Raj. Certainly do. Starting with Sarah Ashley Barker. She has had the hot hand for Coach Curry and the women's basketball team. Barker has averaged just over 27 points and 10 rebounds in the past three games. She was named the co-SEC player of the week for her performances in the victories against Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Also, Kayla McCray recorded the fastest 400-meter time in the world at the New Mexico Collegiate Classic. His time of 45.02 is the fastest time the world has seen as he was named the SEC Men's Runner of the Week. Some great performances again, and it seems like every week we have some SEC Players of the Week breaking records with performances. Yeah, we're all tied to that, and thanks for watching another edition of Tide TV this week. We'll see you again next time, same time, same channel. You can also watch us online at RollTide.com on our official UA Athletics page on YouTube. See you next week, everybody. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield.